One summer day, when I was about four or five, and my older brother that was six or seven wanted to go swimming, my mom had a friend named Jessica who lived in these apartments that had an in-ground swimming pool. So my mom's friend made the suggestion that we go swimming at her apartment's pool. So we got ready, and we went down to the pool. Now, I don't want to sound racist, but we were the only white people there. Not that this was a problem, because everyone was having a good time. I'm just mentioning it. My brother was in a pool in a canoe float, and this lady was pushing him towards the deep end of the pool, and he didn't have floaties on. Meanwhile, my mom, Jessica, and myself were outside of the pool, and my mom begins to tell the lady, Hey, quit pushing my son! He doesn't have any floaties on, and you're pushing him down to the deep end. He's going to fall off if you don't stop. The lady then replied back with, So? What are you going to do about it? This really set my mom off, and she then replied back with, What am I going to do about it? I'll show you if you don't stop. So in order to protect my brother from drowning, my mom then gets into the pool in the shallow end, and works her way towards this lady that is trying to push my brother off the float, when she then gets pulled back by three men. Then later on after this incident, we were then told that those three men were her uncles. So they drag her in the pool back down to the shallow end, while one man has her left arm, and another man has her right arm, and then there's also one in the back of her, and they begin pushing her underwater and holding her there. She felt like she was underwater for over five minutes, but in reality, it was only a few seconds. Then they would lift her up, letting her get just a little bit of breath, and then dunk her right back under the water for more. They would repeat this process several times over. While this was all happening, I remember screaming and crying. And as I was crying, there was another black man that came up to me, separate from this other group that had my mom. He had asked me what's wrong, asked if he didn't even see what these men were doing to my mom. I felt like he was being sarcastic, but because I was so desperate for help, I had asked this man anyway. That's my mom. Can you please help her? The man actually replied no, saying that he wasn't getting involved. But then right then, just as I thought my mom was about to die, they finally let her go. Totally out of breath, we left the pool and we went up to Jessica's apartment to call the police, but they never did find the guys that did this to her. Everyone ended up being okay, but my brother and I can't remember how we got away from them and how we all left at the same time from the pool area. Even though this happened, I want everyone to know that I didn't become racist because of it, but I just didn't understand why all those people just sat by and watched it happen and didn't even try to help us. It's just really insane to me. This happened when I was 22. One late night, I was spending the night with my friend Heather. We were at the apartment in the apartment complex she lived in at the time. For privacy reasons, I'm not saying where this happened or when it happened. We had had a couple of drinks, and we did a group video chat with our boyfriends. And then after about 25 minutes, we hung up and fell asleep. Well, here's where it gets terrifying. At about 1.30 in the morning, Heather and I were woken up to the sound of a high-pitched whistle, like one of those whistles a coach uses during a sport. Heather said it was the fire alarm, and we both started to smell smoke. So we knew right away what we thought it was. We then heard a guy screaming in the hallway, Evacuate the building immediately. There's a fire in the neighboring hallway. Heather and I got the hell out of the apartment, and we went to go check the hallway the guy was mentioning. And sure enough, the hallway was fully engulfed. The fire was huge, and there was smoke smothered all around the top floor, and we could definitely feel the heat when we went to go check it out. We, along with everyone else in the building, ran down the stairs and out the main door, and the smoke spread to the main floor as well, except that the main floor wasn't as smothered. After we got outside, everyone was crowded in the parking lot. The fire department had the fire under control within about an hour, 
They then put box fans in all of the hallways and everywhere else in the building to get all of the smoke out. The fire alarms were turned off when the fire was put out. There was so much smoke in the building, and we had to wait outside for another three hours before it was finally safe to go back inside. Once we were finally able to go back inside, Heather and I went inside to look at the damage. The hallway was burned to a crisp, and it was a total loss. Everyone living in that hallway was displaced, and they had to find new places to live. Thankfully, there was no damage to Heather's apartment, since it was in another hallway, but we couldn't get back to sleep for the whole rest of that night. Later that morning, I called my mom and I explained to her everything that happened. She was terrified, but she was also glad that I was alright. Both my mom and Heather's mom came over to Heather's apartment a few minutes later. They pulled us into their arms, and we were all crying so hard. We were all just really glad that we weren't hurt. They said that we were really lucky that we weren't hurt, and that Heather's apartment wasn't burned. We found out that the cause of the fire was faulty wiring, and to this day, it still gives me nightmares. To start off, I was 10 years old at the time, and back then my grandparents used to own a whole apartment complex, and the leasing office was attached to our house in the complex, so this is where I spent most of my childhood. My grandmother would run the office, and my grandfather would do all of the physical labor along with the other workers. I spent most of my time in the complex riding my bike, walking my Jack Russell, playing in the creeks behind the trees. You know, normal kid stuff. Nothing crazy. I always felt safe around there, and everyone knew me as the owner's grandchild. Certain parts of these memories get a little foggy as I get older, so I can't remember every incident, but I remember enough to know this man. Something just wasn't right with him. When my grandmother first leased the apartment to this guy, I never even knew until I actually met him. The first time I met him, I was walking around the complex, doing nothing in particular but minding my business, and I see him. He approaches me, and he begins to make small talk, and me being friendly, always spoke back. He mentioned how he just moved in, and how his apartment is super cool, and he doesn't mind if me and my friends ever want to come over. I didn't think anything of it at the time, and agreed. But things just started to progress the more I'd see him around, and eventually, I knew something wasn't right. The next time I met him, I was walking around the entrance of the apartment complex. And to add, Mercer County Community College was right behind the apartment complex. So I used to travel over there, and you could cut through the college by the entrance of the apartments. I was only over there because the overhead bridge that looks down into the creek was there and I used to enjoy peeking over and seeing the fish swim around. Well, once I was done looking, I turned around, and there he was, right in the walkthrough of the apartments in the college. He's peeing into the bushes. He turns towards me, exposing himself, and he then apologizes for me seeing him like this. Of course, as a 10-year-old child, your brain doesn't normally process things as easily. So I told him it was okay, and walked away. He just stood there, reminding me about the apartment, and that was the end of it. I went home. Now he started getting really creepy, because the last two encounters I very clearly remember were the final straw to it all, and little ten-year-old me started realizing this wasn't okay. I was walking my dog Buddy one day, and he sees me yet again, and approaches me. He asked if he could pet the dog. I was hesitant but agreed because my dog's very friendly. He crouched down to pet him and then his penis fell out the side of his shorts. And this was when I realized that he wasn't okay. He sat there petting my dog while also groping himself very visibly for me to see. I was appalled by this. I honestly didn't know what to even do and alarms were raising in my head. I just stared at what he was doing as he asked me what I like to do and if I'd like to come over and play games with him. I just told him, 
yeah, maybe one day. And I told him I better get going so I can finish walking the dog. This was the final encounter. I had my best friend who was 10 at the time and my sister who was 3 at the time over at the house with me, and we decided to take the dog for a walk. He was fun to walk with, very hyper, and would drag you if you let him. We were walking in the backyard of some of the apartments, and lo and behold, the sky appears, almost like he knew we were there, like he was watching us. He began to casually talk, complimenting my dog and asking us if we wanted to see his dog. My little sister agreed and walked a little closer as he then pulled out his phone. I was honestly fooled for a second, and I thought maybe he really does have a dog. He crouched down next to my sister, and it started showing photos. And as I got closer, I realized that he was showing nude photos of him and, well, what he referred to as Dick as his dog. I then realized that he was yet again groping himself, and had also exposed himself through his shorts again. He was way too close to my baby sister for comfort, and it made me very uncomfortable. He could have snatched her and ran with her if he really wanted to, and I always think about that. I was in a state of shock as I realized he was inviting us over again. My best friend realized this was creepy as well, and we just exchanged looks. I knew that I needed to get us out of there, so I bent down to pet my dog, and I clipped his leash, knowing he'd dart away at an intense speed, and he did just as I planned. We yelled that the dog's loose, grabbed my sister, and noped the fuck out of there, and I left the guy there exactly where he remained, just staring. We ran home in tears, telling my grandfather everything I experienced since the first day he moved in. I felt really horrible knowing that I let it escalate so long to the point that others around me were also exposed to it. The cops were called, and he was arrested on the spot, and we had to tell everything that happened to child investigators, cops, and the news. It was a lot. After he was gone, reality really set in, and so did the trauma. I swear that that dog saved us and got us out of there, and I really miss him every day. Because if I didn't have him, I wouldn't have even known what to do. I just think more so about what would have happened if I had fell for going into his apartment, or even worse, if he got his hands on a child that was ten times more gullible than me. The fucked up part is that he was only in jail for the weekend until his family bonded him out. Okay, so I wanted to give a little update. The guy is actually still alive, unfortunately. He moved to the next state over to Pennsylvania, and his address and phone number are public. Apparently, he's a mechanic now as well. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that this sick fuck is still breathing. For context, I'm a woman living alone in my apartment that's located on the ground floor, so my balcony is very visible for others to see. Like every night, I work at 4am, so I leave at around 3.40. Unfortunately in France, they decided to turn the lights off from 10pm to like 6am I think. But thankfully for me, the landlord where I live turned the lights on just for me from 3am to 4am. It's very dim, but I'm still thankful for it. On this one Thursday night, I leave like always. I go in my car lock it, turn on my lights, and something catches my eye. So I looked up and I thought it was just a cat jumping from my balcony because they love to come by and just look around and leave. But it wasn't a cat. It was a man standing next to my balcony. I think that the lights surprised him. I'm then looking at him and I see him walk away from me on the grass, but he can't leave that way. So I'm now just staring at him scared and crying, not knowing what to do for like 10 seconds. But then I can see movement again, and it's him walking towards me. Very quickly, I just continue walking to the main road like nothing happened. He takes one last look at me in my car before I then lose sight of him. Also, he's wearing black sweatpants and a camo jacket. I really don't know what he was doing here, 
If he was sleeping on my plastic sofa on my balcony or what. But I just can't stop thinking about his face looking at me. Or what could have happened if it was pitch black outside. I just don't know. I wanted to make a report to the police, but they said they can't because there's no damage. The landlord lady also told me, No, maybe it wasn't for you. Maybe he was looking around for a dwelling. Uh, at this hour, and in that kind of outfit? Yeah, I don't think so, I said. She then replied back with, No, I'm talking like a robbery. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Ever since this night, I always carry pepper spray, and I run to my car instead of walking. I also bought a surveillance camera for my balcony just to check before going out at night, because I'm just super paranoid, and I feel like I'm developing OCD, as I have to look and check outside before going to sleep. Update. This is three months after everything else I just mentioned. Since then, for my own security and comfort, I've decided to buy another surveillance camera. The position is perfect, and I can move the camera from my phone even if I'm not home. This is where it starts getting even weirder, though. So, the first time I saw someone was the 4th of May at 3.40 a.m. In June, nothing happened, so I thought maybe it was just a one-time thing, like wrong place, wrong time. Well, on the 4th of July... I'm getting ready around 3 a.m., and 20 minutes later, I see a notification from the camera on my phone. I didn't get nervous because sometimes my camera just captures bugs or spiders. But, oh boy, did my heart skip a beat. I opened the notification, and the video started. I saw a man walking straight next to my balcony, and he's hiding his face. I actually froze for like five minutes, and I decided to call the cops because I didn't know if he was still here, because the cameras didn't send any notifications after that. The cops came, but he wasn't there anymore. I was really weirded out by that situation. Okay, so now we're at the 23rd of August. Third time's a charm, right? I left for work at 3.45 a.m. Yes, precisely. While I was driving, I get a notification at 3.47 a.m. It's again the same dude from July. He's hiding his face, but I can recognize his gait. I called the cops right away, and we met at my place. I was crying and explaining that this wasn't the first time this happened, and that I didn't feel safe, and that I just couldn't understand why this was happening. The male cops were totally minimizing the whole situation, and it got me so pissed because they could see I was confused and scared, but they just kept saying not to worry, that maybe the guy's not even here for me. I don't care. It's 3 a.m. and it's dark outside, and a random dude is close to my place. Anyway, they couldn't do anything because, again, there were no damages. I decided to lay down a handrail just in case, even though I know I can't do anything. I'm still really nervous every night when I go to work, and I still carry my pepper spray with me just in case. I also have really great neighbors all around me that have kind of helped me out in some ways, but I just don't know why he's here, and why the fuck in the middle of the night? I just have no idea, but I really hope he doesn't harm me, or that he has any other sinister plans. I'm really uneasy about the encounter I just had. Any insight would be so much appreciated. I'm a 20-year-old female, and I live in a large multi-building apartment complex, so there's a lot of neighbors I've never met or seen before. I stopped to pet a cat who roams around the complex while I was taking out the trash, and I then see a man out there who's in his mid-30s to 40s, and he approaches me. He says hello, and he asks how I am. I say hello back, and I ask him the same, to which he then replies back with, Oh, you know, trying to survive this dark and brutal world that we live in. So I'm uncomfortably like, Ah, yeah. No alarm signaled at this point, but then he goes. 
So how's that blue beetle you drive? And I'm then immediately feeling creeped out, given that I've never met or even seen this man before. Then he asks if I enjoy being a college student at the college I attend. At this point, I'm really creeped out. And I then say to him, How would you know that? To which he then laughs and then says back to me, uh, Well, come on. It's obvious. He then begins warning me about how the world is malicious and just how cruel people are. He says to not trust anyone and to always watch my back because you really never know what people will do, especially in this area. I try to wrap it up and I tell him to have a good night and he then tries asking for my specific unit and for my name. I deflect, once again telling him bye and I rush to leave. As soon as I got inside, I actually started crying and shaking because I've never had such a bad gut feeling about a person like that. I'm alone now and I feel beyond creeped out. His only conversation points were casually mentioning information that a stranger shouldn't know, as well as warnings regarding the cruelty of mankind. So altogether, it almost felt like an indirect threat. Please, any outside perspectives on this interaction would be really appreciated. Do I need to worry about this guy? In 2015 to 2016, I had moved to Florida from California to go to college. I was around 18 at the time. I was staying in a small studio by myself pretty far from university, but also close enough to where my apartment was the hangout spot. To paint you a picture of how it looked, it was the shape of a rectangle, but with only one window. So you walk in and it's the living area. Then there's the kitchen, then the bathroom, with the closets on the right side of the wall. One particular night, I had about six friends over at my apartment, so it was four guys and three girls in total, including me. We were all partaking in illegal activities, drinking, smoking, etc., but we were all under 21. So when I got a knock on my door, I thought it was a neighbor about to complain either about the smell or the noise. I checked the peephole, and I saw a lady, whom I instantly recognized as a panhandler that's always at the corner street of my apartment complex. So I opened the door, and I asked her if I could help her out with anything. She had a towel over her shoulder, and then said, Hi, I've been going around door to door, but everyone keeps turning me away. I was wondering if I could please just take a shower. I promise, I don't want anything else. I just want to clean myself. Now, I know any sane person would have said no and told her to keep it moving, but I was a dumb 18-year-old empath that was high as balls and also panicking in the moment. So I said yes. As I walked her into my bathroom, I told her how to turn on the water and where the soap was, then walked out. The look of pure terror on my friends' faces was priceless. All at once, they started asking why I had done such a thing and that if I realized just how dangerous this situation could be. Was there someone waiting for her outside? Did she have a gun? Was she gonna rob us? One of them even went to the kitchen to grab all the knives and then just hid them just in case she tried anything. We were all so quiet, just anxiously waiting for her to finish up the shower. And then when she was done, she came out of the restroom and I walked her to the door. May God bless you, she said and I never saw her again, not even at the corner. I guess you could say what I did was stupid, but I think good karma will come for me one day, or at least I hope so. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed these stories. If you ever want to submit your own, you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night everyone, and remember, to always... Stay.